now call on George Adam to be followed by Michael McMahon. Six minutes, please. Thank you, President Officer. I would like to say I would like to agree with John Penley. We have to inspire young people to vote because I think we have to ensure that we have the debate in such a way that uh, people want to actually uh, put their uh, cross down in whatever part of the dem democratic process they are. But I would like to thank the committee for the work that they have done because uh, votes for 16 and 17 year olds have been something that has been a part of my political life since I was 16. Unlike Richard Lyle, it was not 1966, it was quite a while after that. I will not say when it was because uh, I would embarrass the Deputy First Minister, presiding Officer, because there is a year of a difference in her age, so that just would not be polite. She has obviously done a lot better over the years. She has uh, not had the hard paper round that I had. But uh, can I say that? Uh, <laughs> I remember how it felt during that two-year period, presiding officer, between 16 and 18. I can just about remember that far back. You're an adult, but you're not believed to be responsible enough to vote. You know, I was politically uh, involved, but I was involved in the process, but I never had the opportunity to actually take the, make a decision on the future of my own community or anything within the country. And I was politically active, but at the same time politically powerless. And uh, some of the debates that we had then were probably very similar to the debates that we are having at the moment, because when I, during that period, you know, uh, it wasn't Trident on the Clyde, it was Polaris on the Clyde, I'm showing my age now, uh, they, they were talking about the replacement for uh, Polaris, uh, that debate's still going on just now as well, instead of the bedroom tax, you had the poll tax, and it shows uh, the opinion of West, in my opinion, Westminster doesn't change. It doesn't make any difference. We are still having these debates now, and lots of young people who are involved want to actually discuss about these things and want to vote on these issues because they want to see what can happen in the future. And I think part of the reason we have difficulty with engaging with the public, with the political process, is by the time some people get to a certain age, they become very cynical about it because they haven't seen any progress. And for me, that's what independence offers. It offers the opportunity for all of us within this debate chamber to show what we can actually do and uh, talk about Scotland and what we can do. You know, give us an opportunity to tackle child poverty, another issue that we discussed way back then as well, and uh, ensure that we don't get uh, dragged into illegal wars over the years as well. So all these issues young people have opinions on, and it's important that, those, uh, that they get this franchise for 16 and 17 year olds. They get the opportunity to be involved in the ambitious new Scotland that we all want. Now, all this has been brought about by the Scottish Government negotiating with the Westminster Government. Incidentally, President Officer, I look forward to the Scottish Government negotiating in the next couple of years, quite uh, the Deputy First Minister continuing their good work on that side, because I think this is what we have to ensure to look that we get Scotland that we are all looking for. But when you look at some of the groups that have been involved and uh, have uh, mentioned to the committee about uh, what they actually want. It's already been mentioned that Robin Parker, the NUS, says it's extremely positive that Scottish Government and Westminster Government have agreed that we extend the franchise for the referendum. Uh, there has also been uh, the, the, the Youth Parliament as well has campaigned for votes for 16s for more than a decade. These are all people who are desperately wanting to get involved and want to ensure that everyone can be involved in the debate that we are having. I am pleased that the, the Cabinet Secretary stated that the electoral roll will be dealt with in a manner that will ensure that 16 or 17 year olds will be dealt with with respect. I think uh, some of the issues that my colleague Linda Fabiani brought up about when they are doing the role, it is important that we ensure that the, the register of young Young voters will be strictly limited, as was said, because I think we have to make sure that uh, there, there is still a form of protection with people who are obviously 15 year old when they're going to be doing the, the, the registration themselves. But when you look at some of the, the people, uh, some of the groups that have supported it, the EIS have strongly supported extending the franchise to all 16 and 17 year olds for all future elections, and I agree with that myself because I think it's exactly what I said earlier on. We have to make sure that we manage to enthuse uh, young people and, uh, at the, when they first start to get involved in the political process, so that they remain uh, involved and they continue to, uh, to take a part, an active part within public life in Scotland. You know, the, my own the, U, uh, Union Unite have a long-standing uh, policy position that allows uh, the young people to vote for 16-year-olds. Yes, no problem. Jackson Carlin. I wonder if the member is confusing enthusiasm with extending the vote. Um, the participation of people aged between 18 and 24 who have the vote already in elections is decidedly low. How does he propose to enthuse them? It's not just a case of extending the franchise, it's extending the franchise and encouraging people to use it. 
It's the same for just about every other uh, kind of age group throughout the, the, the actual demographic when you look at it. But you have to, the whole idea is it's what we're actually showing, what we're showing the public, how we're going to actually make a difference. People end up disengaging because they don't actually believe and become very cynical with the politicians. It's about vision, it's about passion, it's about the future of the country. That's what's going to make a difference for uh, a lot of the people involved. One of the things that was uh, mentioned as well was uh, the idea of prisoners not voting, and I, I would have to agree with the Scot Scottish Government's view that uh, you know, if individuals do actually uh, commit a crime, then they have broken their pact with society and that they should possibly look at the uh, situation. I, I wouldn't agree that they would be have an opportunity to vote. But one of the things that uh, I would say to some of the Labour members, just gently remind them, is that uh, the Labour shadow, Justice Secretary uh, Mr Khan, uh, MP, said on the issue of prisoner voting, Labour has consistently believed that those deprived of their freedom after being given a custodial sentence should not be entitled to vote. While we recognise the importance of the European Convention on Human Rights and the European Court of Rights, we feel the original decision back in 2004 was wrong, and that's why the Labour government didn't implement it. So when it looks at this, the uh, Labour Party members can say that they don't actually uh, want, uh, or they want the, the franchise for prisoners, but that's not what's been said down at Westminster. So in closing, presiding officer, I would say that the whole idea for getting younger people involved in particular with politics at an early stage, ensuring that we can use them and be important parts in an engagement with the political process is an important thing. And I look forward to that in the future. Thank you very much.